Good morning. How are you today? So if you want to know how to be a top realtor, you're about to find out. In the course of 12 months, these next three realtors uh, were in my coaching program this past year, were able to hit six figure incomes and will make all the awards that they want to make for this year. Stay tuned and there's a surprise at the end. Bye for now. Well, here's a day in the life of Ann Milano as a real estate professional and mentor. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today, I am meeting with the panel of some of the top realtors over the course of the last year. These realtors have all been um, licensed for no more than 48 months. Um, one will be Rookie of the Year out of his office. One is attempting to beat him at Rookie of the Year out of his office. <laughs> and the other one would be Rookie of the Year last year had he not been on the team. <laughs> so these are the top people. Also, we expect to see great things out of them for 2020. They are about to go inside and we're going to sit down in the panel. Hope you'll join us for the next few minutes and see what they have to say. This is Marcus Butler. This is Janine Reedy. And this is Bo Hutchinson. Welcome to my uh, dream team panel. <laughs> How about that? Um, I started with, as you know, uh, Kelly Williams. Well, you guys don't know. Um, my story is I started with Kelly Williams uh, back in January 1st, uh, 2019, as, the, uh, as an associate broker and as a uh, productivity coach at another office. And now um, I decided to move over here and join the mentorship program uh, to help everyone to get started. So I thought about it and I decided that I would like to bring to you um, because you're going to just see me, and I'm boring. <laughs> and eventually, you're going to get tired of hearing the things that I say because a lot of it's repetitive. Correct? I mean, are there times that yeah, I talk to you and you go, oh my gosh, she's talking to me so many times, right? <laughs> anyway, long story short, I got started, and the very, very, very first person that I met was Janine Reedy. I actually hadn't even signed the papers yet with uh, Keller Williams, and we were just discussing the position, and Janine came into an office, and uh, she's going to tell you her story and, and who she is and where she's from. Hey, okay. So, hi, I'm Janine Reedy. Um, I'm originally from Huntsville, Alabama. Um, I, I got my realtor license back in May of 2018. I started with Keller Williams immediately as when I got my license. Um, and I started at one office and I switched to the Keller Williams Buckhead office last December of 2018. That's the same day I met Ann there. Um, it was a coincidence and, um, so and Jean, were you, when did you get licensed? May 2018. May 2018. And when did we meet? December 2018. So for the last, for six months you were in real estate, correct? I was, I would say part time, but I was, I was also, um, taking a lot of investment, cor investment courses and everything as well. So yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so when you got started. Um, did you, uh, so you were in a, 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 did you do any transactions out of the other two offices that you were in? No, I only did one, uh, one transaction. Okay. Yeah. Out of one of the offices. Yeah. Okay. And so when I met Janine, um, the very first words out of her mouth were, <laughs> just tell me what to do. I will do exactly what you tell me to do and you can ride me like a horse. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is exactly what she said. She signed on the dotted line. Yeah. And then what happened next? Um, yeah, so this is what she did. She stayed on top of me. What I loved about Ann is that uh, she was always available for me. She was very forthcoming and just giving, just willing to give me all the information. Anything that she learned, she would share with me. Anything she knew, she shared with me. Um, she was always, she was also hungry to learn new things all the time. She was always working, looking at, looking for new ways to be innovative, creative, to be productive, how, you know, how to get the quickest results. So not only does she teach you a lot of her, all of her experience, over 20 plus years of experience already, but she's consistently looking to stay ahead. And everything she learned, she came back and taught, taught us everything she learned all the time. So that's uh, that helped me a lot. She motivated me because I got to a point where I was really discouraged um, because where I was at before, I didn't really feel like I, the information and training was available to me like I wanted it to be and I was very hungry. So I was getting discouraged. I'm like, I don't know what else to do. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. I was getting hungry, I was getting discouraged. And when I met Ann, she had that same fire that I had to be successful as a productivity coach. 
um, as, as I did to be a successful real estate agent. And we joined together and, you know, it, that's what got me through. The second person that I met uh, at Keller Williams was this gentleman here. His name's Bo Hutchinson. And um, I signed the papers. I went downstairs. And um, in my first meeting, I had three people. <laughs> Similar to this, but different. <laughs> and um, Bo was one of them. And um, I was excited to meet Bo because um, uh, I had looked at who the different people were that were in the group. And Bo was uh, doing fairly well. Um, so tell us a little bit about where you're from and where you graduated from and stuff. <coughs> I am from yeah. I'm from Coxie, Alabama, which is really like Athens, Alabama, which is kind of mm -hmm. Huntsville, Alabama. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I've been in Atlanta for about eight years. Um, came over here, I went to Auburn University, got a degree in management, and started doing logistics and supply chain. And came over by, here. By the way, congrats on the last game. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Nerve wracking. Yeah, well. um, but uh, so I came over here for a um, logistics job um, and did that for about six years. And didn't really give me a lot of fulfillment. So I decided I was going to get my real estate license. And I got it in April of 2018. Um, so if I remember correctly, one of the things about your resume is that um, when you were in college, was it, or somewhere? You had bought a little house. Yes, I did. So I, so I guess I really got my start in uh, in real estate. I was, it was I as a, as an investor yeah, for 2010. Probably, uh, yeah, I, I bought something. I, so I've been doing kind of stuff for myself since 2010, and I'd always been interested in it, which is what led me to real estate after I got out of logistics. But uh, but yeah, I bought a house in 2010 in Athens, Alabama, and uh, I. Uh, it was really, it was, you know, the, the bottom of the market, paid cash for it. It was move-in ready. Couldn't believe it. Moved all my friends in and uh, <laughs> had, was making like 500 bucks a month off of rent. I thought, and living there, and I thought, this is the best thing. <laughs> so I, I literally got addicted from that. Uh, so then I started in 2010, and I moved to Atlanta, bought a couple of other real properties. And, uh, and that's what kind of led me to real estate. Okay. All right. And then my when I first met uh, Bo, um, uh, I asked him if he would like to join the productivity program, the mentorship program, and he said to me, I had just kept, and I said, you know what, I'm doing pretty good, um, I think I'm going to wait till it, my cap rolls over and then we'll talk. And that was, what, December? That was in January. Oh, it was in January? Yeah, the first week in January. My cap didn't roll over until April, um, so I said, we'll, we'll talk. Yeah, a few conversations in my too. Okay, so last was my King of Kings over there, <laughs> Mr. Marcus Buck Butler, contact Mr. Butler. I love his uh, his, uh, his Facebook, um, uh, you have to go and like his page on Facebook, he's really fun to follow. So tell us his story. Well, <clears throat> I originally started out, um, well, I was a mortgage loan, I was surprised to come into real estate. I had a friend of mine that was telling me I needed to get in real estate. Um, so seeing real estate on the on the loan officer side, I said, okay, well, maybe it'd be something I'd be interested in. So I got into the, the business and came on at, on, on the team. So I came on as a buyer's agent, uh, which was, it was good. I, I came into the business excited, just ready to learn as much as I could learn. Because looking at it from the loan officer side, the money that I made there was pretty much triple on the real estate side. So it was a no brainer So I got into business. Um, things just didn't work out on the team. Like I wanted it to, so I kind of went my, my own direction. And um, I was kind of out there by myself. And that's when I ran into this Ann. Um, and what I loved about Ann was her energy. Um, and like Janine said, she she matched the energy that I brought to the table. So I was just like, okay, this is this is going to be a, a nice fit. Um, got with Ann, signed a paperwork. Um, talked a lot about sports in that very oh, first. Talked a, talked a lot about sports, yeah, a lot about sports. <laughs> And then within what, not even what, maybe two months, I went, I capped. So, I mean, that was, that was perfect. And then I met this group of guys too, so that was just great. It was great, it was phenomenal. And Keller Williams, <coughs> one of the reasons why I joined Keller Williams is I love the sharing attitude that they have here, which is amazing. Because you not only get an opportunity to meet amazing people, some are going to want to go to the top of the mountain. Some that we've met along the way have gone into their little cozy caves and they're very happy. 
The reason that I invited all three of these folks here today is because each one of them comes from a different place. The other day when we spoke on, um, in, in, on, the, uh, on the Zoom meeting, um, you all were able to see my real estate pie. Each one of them does the real estate pie from a different angle. I, um, for years, only used basically one piece of that pie. So now that I've incorporated multiple pieces of the pie, I'm really curious to see what 2020 is going to bring. It should be really, really interesting. So with that being said, Janine, one of the things that I so impressed me about you is your ability to do um, subdivision circle prospecting for open houses. Janine did an open house in East Atlanta and had something like 30 people show up. Yeah, I was like 20 something right now. Which, I don't know, 30. Anyway, so I have never, I repeat, never had 25 to 30 people come to my open house, ever. So I was intrigued with Janine to find out how did she do that? Well, for me, um, there's multiple things that go into play there. Um, I make sure I put a lot of signs out. A lot of people don't want to put out one or two signs. You put directionals everywhere because on the weekend, people are actually already riding around and want something to do or looking for houses or just like to look at houses. So I put probably anywhere from eight to 10 signs out. I think one time for me, we put 12 signs out and I'm hitting every corner that they're directed to my house. Um, I also do door knocking. Uh, where I actually go start with the first thing that you do. Okay, so, so first on thing, Wednesdays you do circle prospecting, correct? Well, I want to say that it depends, it depends on what I'm having the open house. So I also so I do the signs. I also do um, circle prospecting where I we had something called cold realty. We don't have it anymore. When, yeah. So it pulls emails and phone numbers. So what I would do is send an email. I would create my open house flyer. I email blast out to the neighbors. I pull a 0.5 mile radius. Sometimes I do one mile radius, but usually it's 0.5 mile radius. I'll email out the flyer for the open house. I'll call. I mean, there's no way I can call all of the neighbors, but I'll try to call quite a few of them and invite the personally invite them out to the open house if they have any friends or family. Come out. We have refreshments there. We want to meet you. Um, and then it, I'll door knock as well. So when I do door knocking, I so, the, so one day she does the the email blast. Do you do the phone calls the same day? You do the usually I try to do the same day. So she does that the same day. Then when do you go and join on? And I also want to do email blasts. I want to copy all the email addresses because some people want their information private. So I never put like in, in just a two box. I'll email it to myself and block copy all the neighbors. Um, and then I door knock and I'll put, um, I'll you know meet the neighbors also too, which helps you get more listings and it just shows how hard you're working for the neighbor to sell their house. Um, I think that usually, generally I do about 50 houses, um, but I have done anywhere from 100 to 300 houses, depending on how bad I want the neighbor to so, um, door, then, door knocking does. And yeah. you just go from door to door <coughs> yeah. knocking. And yeah, now what time I get But let me ask you a question. So the trick is when you're doing this door knocking thing that you're doing, and you get to the person's house, and you're doing it for the open house, does that make it a little bit easier than the whole door knocking process it of is just cold calling your neighborhood? It's because you're inviting them. It does make it easier. And I've actually built relationships with people. I actually have neighbors calling me where they have somebody that's looking to buy or sell now. Um, so which is she's created mind share in areas. All three of these folks have in various different places and I'll we'll touch on each one of them, how they do it. Um, but that's what she did. Then she goes in and now those people that she's actually met face to face, they've now become her Mets. Yeah. So her Mets are where she's gonna get her business. If it's a neighborhood that's not that open to, that doesn't seem that open to you door knocking or Maybe not as safe, then I won't do those neighborhoods. So I won't recommend to do it all the time, but if it's a neighborhood that you're trying to be in, I'm looking for a reason to meet the neighbors. So now do you find that in the neighborhoods where you do your open houses, do you find that the price point that you're in, that that's the price point of buyer that you're going to be attracting? Yeah, definitely so. Um, you'll have some buyers that's less um, because they just want to see bigger houses. And I'm not saying you might end up wanting to cross a buyer that may want more, but generally you're going to have buyers in the same price point. That's why they came to the house, the open house. Yeah. Great. All right. So, Marcus, tell us a little bit about your business. Originally, Marcus's business was strictly buyers. And then we got together. Sure. Got together and then brought him over to the dark to, side. To the listing side. <laughs> uh, which is, is, is great. I, I love the listing side because it, it frees up um, time for, for me. For my family 
and I'm a big family guy. If I can free up time and spend more time with my family, then I'm gonna do that all day. Uh, but the listing side is great. Um, you know, a lot of my business comes from my database. And so I reach out to a lot of people on Facebook, uh, all social media platforms, even out of my phone. So if you pull your phone out and you got a thousand people on your phone, then you go through a thousand people. Um, we learned this thing in uh, BOA. I just got up a BOA class. It's called uh, DT, D2. And it's your, you choose a, a letter, two letters. And those are the last names. So either the first names of how you have your people type of. And what that does is it eliminates call bias. Where you say, eh, I may not call that person. You go through all those. And, and, and it's worked for me. Um, as soon as I did it, it was great. And Facebook has been a big part of my business lately because I reach out to people. And what I do is, <clears throat> with the family thing, my wife likes to post a lot of stuff on. My mother-in-law and my wife like to post a lot of stuff with the kids. And so you get likes, comments, and things like that. Those are the people that I follow up because now they become a little warm because they saw something that they liked. And now when I reach out to them, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, so how, how the kids doing? And a lot of times I don't necessarily lead with real estate. It, 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 a lot of times comes back. They'll come back and ask me about real estate. And from there, we build a relationship and have a conversation, and hopefully, it develops into some business. So I'll tell you a little story about me. Um, of the year, I've learned a lot also. And I went to Bold, and there was a lady that was in Bold in January. And um, I usually try not to touch my spirit of influence too much, because well, it's bothering me. You know, I mean, it's hard asking them for. I'd rather ask a stranger for business than my family. It's crazy. <laughs> But anyway, so I went to this uh, this meeting, and uh, they asked um, this woman stood up and she told a story. Uh, they were they were trying to get you to do your sphere of influence. I was like, hey, I'll try it. Well, anyway, uh, she said that what she does is she texts people and asks them to lunch. Just pick five people and ask five people to lunch and see what would happen. I texted a lady who was a previous client and I hadn't talked to her in a while. Um, asked her to lunch. We went to lunch. We sat at the table. I decided she should sell her house. She needed to be out of there. It was too big for her. So we talked about it. She decided to list her house. Well, at that meeting, um, she listed her $700,000 house with me. And then she also had a friend who her listing was getting ready to expire with a realtor. And she just was having a terrible time trying to get her house sold. Um, so that listing was $1.1 so from one text message, I got close to $2 million in real estate listings that um, actually just went into contract. So I'm gonna have a heck of a January. <laughs> but anyway, that's a way to kick off your year. So <clears throat> if you only had talked to one person, look what can happen. Now Marcus touches his fear of influence all the time. But how do you do yours? Um, first off, I want to say, listening to you two is going to take my business to the next level because that was awesome stuff. We all three feet off we, each we other. Yeah, well, I, I, I have a major respect for these two, I'm telling absolutely. you. So, yeah, but, I, I appreciate it's mutual. <laughs> <laughs> Each one of these folks has worked side by side together, made phone calls together, done a variety of different things together. Never once has any of them ever stepped on each other's toes. And all we've ever done is learn and uh, give to each other. And your business will explode from that. Plenty of business out there for everybody. It is. And I, yeah. somebody told me one time, when you, when you don't want to give, you can't receive either. A closed face can't receive either. <laughs> That's right. And mm -hmm. I have learned so much with just sharing. And, you know, you can't, I, I definitely understand there's some people out there that's not trustworthy, but you'll you'll start to feel that and you can sense people, the good people. And you definitely want to surround yourself with people like that that doesn't mind, that won't mind contributing to you and you contribute to them. So, Janine, uh, you and I went on a listing appointment one day, right? Mm -hmm. That we were calling on trying to make a friend of for sale by own apartment. You found a couple. I'm down. I'm trying to remember who the came up with. Who were we? Oh, Bo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I, at the time, I didn't know who Bo was, but I knew of Bo. Uh, and like she said, he was already doing well when I got there. Um, but I knew Elbo, and I'm like, man, who? I never, I never met. I'm like, who is Bo? They was like, yeah, Bo's already been over here. I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna lose. I don't know who you're talking about. Too. We all lost him. We all <laughs> lost. Him. All lost him. Actually, all three of us lost him. Yeah. None of us yeah. got him. So, yeah, he ended up going know, with a realtor he knew, I think, personally or something. Or I'm not exactly sure. Long. I think he went with the cheapest person on the block. I think so. Yeah, I've often told people. But when they said Bo, they were like, I'm not sure. 
I was doing it all funny. This is the side of an unbelievable realtor. He tracked the guy to see if he could have done a better job for him. I did, and I told him congratulations as much as I want to tell him off. I told him right. congratulations. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Yeah. The, the battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> so go, ahead, go ahead and tell your story. Um, so I do a lot of, I, well, I do a lot of two things. Um, I do a lot of what you, I guess you would call circle prospecting. So um, in the beginning, I but don't But he doesn't ever, do it for open houses. He no. sir, he chooses an area, correct? Right. So I had a listing um, the other day, or maybe I see online that like uh, somebody's looking to, um, they have a buyer name, right? And you can see that on the Rawls group, or, or I'm sure that they have a Facebook group here too. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go to the front desk, which y'all can do too. Whoever's in the front desk can say, hey, I want every number and name. Okay, so here in this office, uh -huh. uh, we have a link to the Haynes directory. Okay. And then you do That's it all you yourself, mean. right? So okay. you can pull a billion of them. Oh my God. And I have a billion of them. Um, so, <laughs> so what I'll do, like I had, Don't I had you a love that? Did yeah. you just see seriously yeah. the fear of loss in this man's eyes, <laughs> <laughs> worrying that he wasn't going to get to that directory quick enough? <laughs> okay. But really. Um, so, okay. Where do you live? I live in Smyrna. Um, Is that the area you target? I target all over the place. So, like, I had a listing up in East Cobb, and it went under contract like 11 hours. And I said, you know what? I'm going to call everybody within a mile of here and tell them about this mm -hmm. and also explain, hey, we're having a lot of success for our clients, and I want to sell your house for you. Or I want to help you. I always say I also want to help you buy, but I, I'm trying to move towards listings, right? So I say, hey, this is what happened. This is, you know, so, and it makes it a little more personal because I'm like, hey, Mr. Johnson, you know, this is Bo Keller Williams. I, I was hoping I could have 30 seconds of your time. And you kind of put it in there and say, okay, he's not going to maybe take too much of my time. I'll talk to this guy. And I say, hey, I said a listing about a mile from you. We had a lot of success. And I said, I'm just calling everybody on the call log to see if they want to sell their house. Pretty simple, right? But it, it shows you you're a human. But anyway, I do a lot of circle prospecting. So I just get numbers and names and I just go down the list. And I've got my own little technique. I'll, and it's really simple because I'm not Mr. You know, technology, but I've got this Excel <laughs> sheet and I call the first number. If they answer, great. And if they're nice, I'll put a pink, I'll turn it pink. If they answer and they might have a lead, I turn it green. If they answer and they're just terrible, say don't call me back, I'll delete it. That's pretty simple. That's pretty simple. And I called 750 numbers the, for my first deal. Because I didn't have a very big sphere, right? Just, you know, like you guys, I didn't have a very big sphere here, so I was just circle prospect. So I called 750 numbers, and one turned into a, a buy and a sell, one turned into a, a referral buy and a sell. It took a little bit. But sell and a buy. Sell and yeah, buy. sell and a buy. Um, so, so if you list, how many transactions can you make? If you work with developers, how many can you make? I don't know. Sell them a piece of land, develop land, sell them land to the builders, build cops, sell, sell the house, sell the um, lots to the builders, that's number two. Third time is sell it to the end consumer. Fourth time, market the Dickens out of it for the next seven years and they will have business coming out to you again. That's why you go there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you get when you go with it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, um, anyway, so that's, you know, I like listings because if I'm on a boat in Greece, um, I can make money. If I have a buyer, I gotta fly home. I would like to add though, because um, <laughs> as a newer agent, the buyers are very important. Um, the buyers help you build your, your experience, your confidence, and it helps you build to get listings as well. So I would say definitely listings, is, you, you list the last, it is very it is very important, but don't overlook buyers as a new agent because generally as a newer agent, that's where most of your business is going to come from at first. So definitely never, I wouldn't turn it away. I, if I would have, I would not have been where I am. First thing I ever did was an open house trying to buyers. Yeah. And, and I learned that just for me, that was the fastest way for me to get it, it is. It is. You will get fast. Right. You get money quicker for buyers than sellers, generally. 
um, unless you, you know, it depend, you know, you will get lessons where you'll have under contract in 11 hours, but that's not common. But people like don't get those in. <laughs> or you'll have more multiple, multiple offers in a few, uh, you know, the first day or something like that. I've had that. Um, but you, you know, there don't, a lot of times buyers move quick, but then some buyers move slow too. So you can, it's, it's pros and cons of both. But buyers usually generally is for the venture. So let me ask you a quick question. Marcus, and truthfully, it's okay. Do you call for sale by others? I just started. Okay. Do you call expires? I don't. Okay. Do you call sphere of influence? I do. Circle prospecting? I don't. Okay. So out of the four pieces of pie that you can get listings from, Marcus is touching on for the last year, has only touched on one and has hit six figures this year. Okay, can you imagine what will happen to Marcus if he touches on the other three? He just incorporated for sale by numbers. Janine, do you call for sale by numbers? I do sometimes. Yeah, but generally for me, for sale by owners, though, it's ones that I rob out the signs. And I'm just being, I'm going to answer honestly. Um, the, the ones that sometimes in my area, the ones on the internet, is a lot, it's heavy competition. It's really hard to convert those, and I'm always looking for the quickest return, which is not always the best thing. But FISBOs usually take time to cultivate those. Um, so I, I generally have more success for a FISBO with a sign. Even those may get hit, they don't get hit as hard as the ones that's being targeted on the internet on a regular basis. Because if I see the sign, I'm knocking on the door. So that's what helps me. But when you're just sitting, sitting on the phone and just calling Fizzbos, to me, in my, from my experience, it's been more of a challenge than me actually knocking on the door. Expired? Expired, I do expires. I, two of my listings were from expires and I knock on the door on those as well. And, oh, that's the difference for me. I'll call and I'll pick so up the phone. So this one expired she had, this was great. She, 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 this one's a bulldog, it's crazy. So she, check, is it okay if I can get from Alabama? Cool dog, pit bull, tiger, you know, oh, lion. Yeah. <laughs> Beast, I don't care. I just want to make sure we got the dog. All right, you got me the poodle. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so anyway, so um, so she had this this expired lady, right? And you were talking to her or something. I can't remember what happened. She literally went and door knocked her. Yeah. Well, what happened is a lot of times they're getting so many phone calls. So a lot of times they don't answer the phone. What helped me too? I started focusing in a certain area, which I was always told to do and told me that from the very beginning. But I'm like, no, I want the big dollars. I want the luxury homes. I don't want to target just my area. I, I want to go up north. But the, but the competition is so heavy in those same areas, too. So I'm like, and it was it was taking more time. I couldn't just go simply door knock on someone that's an hour away from me. But when I started targeting my area, targeting my zip code, if you don't pick up the phone, I'm coming to your house. So How long did it take you to... I, generally, literally, it took me most of the year. I didn't really start doing. I didn't really start targeting my areas about maybe two or three months ago, and I have gotten so much of a quicker return, and have been so much more effective, have so much more time to do to accomplish more. Um, it, it, that was that was a game changer for me. Start to focus on my area. I have two small children. Um, still don't have time with them like I need to. But it's a lot better instead of me trying to drive an hour to chase chase business here, chase business there. Now, don't get me wrong. If I have a client and I have demand somewhere, then that's a different story. But that's not where I target anymore. I target around myself. And now, since that, I've been able to get three listings in three of the most popular neighborhoods around my house. Um, I just what did you my just area. recently do that um, for your marketing? A billboard. Campaign. And so then again, I did We were on the south side, started yeah. looking for a billboard. Thank you. Wow. That's because I started targeting my area again. Well, then what happened? What was my biggest problem is I was too scattered. I was trying to chase business everywhere. Mm -hmm. You're only one person until you build a team. You don't have that type of time. You don't have that type of manpower to do it either. You have to pick. So, what was the area. number one thing that you resisted from me forever? Time blocking. And. And that's well, that was one of the reasons. I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, why can't I time block? Where is where are the issues? And that's how I figured that out even more. So I when, when we're talking about block. time blocking, you had it in your head what you were doing, but what did you actually do to create it? I had, I had well, I had to start to try to stick to a schedule. But again, you the, had to the write core, it down. I had she to write took it down. out a calendar. She yeah. did either her Google calendar. Well, she has an Android, so. Um, but you're gonna see the re you hit the re you have to figure out how to get the time, and that was my issue. They kept telling me the time, but I'm like, I, there how? 
Yeah. How can I time block? But that's so, without spreading myself too thin. So that's so, the, that was the issue. So to time block, I'm talking about from the minute you wake up in the morning to feeding your baby, to driving your Uber, to taking your tennis lesson, to doing whatever it is that interferes with your real estate business uh, to prospect. So you have two jobs in real estate. What are they? Lead gen, follow up. You have two jobs? Yeah, there's really two. The follow is definitely part of lead gen. Uh, One more. Bar. Oh, good oh, marketing. 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 Okay. So two. Marketing <laughs> to prospect. <laughs> marketing to prospect like she did okay. and does and like he does and like he does. Well, he doesn't do this good yet. We're getting there. <laughs> we gotta make him make the phone to get it a little bit easier. Isn't it easier when the phone calls you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Can't imagine. Uh -huh. I'm yeah. 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 So the the phone has to ring in your direction. And that's the goal, is to get the phone to ring in your direction, not in the other direction. I'm big on YouTube because I'm going to be a real estate YouTube influencer. Make no mistake about it. I have almost two hundred subscribers now and I'm like rocking. I'm so excited. Can I add one more thing to that too? And this is something critical for me as well. And she was saying this physical expired circle prospecting in your database, right? Sphere of influence or your database. It's good to be familiar with the scripts for all four. You want to be well diverse with all four of them. You want to practice all four of them and never neglect any area. However, from my personal experience, I think it's better when you realize which one you're the best which one you're the best at, target that one and kill that one. Because again, once you're if you're too scattered, it's hard to focus. It's hard to stay focused on something. You're not you're not as effective. So that's why I suggest Mondays are for sale by owners, Tuesdays are expired, Wednesdays are circle prospecting, Thursdays are sphere of influence, and Friday is my social media day. But you can't just do it honestly, you can't just do expires one day because then you're gonna miss the expires the other four or five days. So like me myself personally, I call the I target my zip code and I call the expires in my zip code. And you do that every day. If that's what you're good at. Same thing with Fizzball. It's really about what's, what, to me, it's about what you're good at. If you can do it, then do it. If you can do all four, do all four, because everyone has their own abilities and strengths. So I met a girl that did 47 uh, expired listings last year. 47. Y'all yeah. have the script for it. I gave you the script. Those scripts are helpful. So they are great. The second thing that people resist in real estate is? Resist in real estate? When I'm telling them to do something. Oh, you, well, you always tell me to lead to, I mean, not, not lead to, it's gross. Yeah, screw and time yeah. So, the two things if you could just take out away from this meeting is time block, learn your scripts, and know your objections. Oh, and yeah. it's really important to have coaching coach because, um, number one, it helped me build my confidence. I knew that if I, if I had a question, I, was, I had someone to call. And also, it kind of helps cut down the whole, like, trying to figure things out. You know, you, you, when you have that guidance, to me, that was stressful trying to figure out, like, what should I do today? How do I do it? What direction do I go in? It just gives you more direction. It takes away a lot of the frustration. You still, I mean, real estate is still hard. Don't get, don't get me wrong. It takes, it's hard work. But, you know, when you have a coach, it's just more direction, and you have that confidence and stability behind you. And that's what helped. That's what Ann gave me. Ann was my fuel to, to push me, and I didn't want to, and I didn't want to let her down. Either. I say that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to let her down. One of the bubble laws, I think, is success is simple, but not easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Gets you to that end result faster. Because I was the same way. I'm all over the place trying yeah. to do a lot of different things, cast a huge net. And I really wasn't really seeing the success I wanted until I narrowed everything down and just listened. And yeah. sometimes you, you just have to kind of with that practice side and just listen. Because yeah. cause Ann has called me non-stop, non-stop, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> but when I answered, I mean, she puts me, she put me right back on track. I mean, and that's, that's what's so been So if I get a call from one of these guys, I get to do that. Yeah. And that was, that was. Because I know they're not calling me just to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't care about checking and see how you're doing, but I also have a question. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> so when I do business, a lot of times and I call people up, my initial thing is um, I just kind of sort of go directly into what my question is or directly into what I want to tell you. I forget about the, um, the niceties. Right, right, right. I'm the same way. Yeah, I got to go. But all three of these guys are exactly the same. Yeah. But 
So okay, so you call, you do call for sale by owners. I call, yeah, I call. You, all you of them. do call <laughs> expires. You do call circle, and, and you do. what is the one thing that you don't do that you'd like to add in twenty twenty, Marcus? Expired. Expires, great. Okay, what about? I need to do better. I I never. I, unfortunately, let me stop. And I think that's the affirmation. So I need to do better about um, calling my database because I haven't gotten much of a return out of it. I don't really make it a priority. Um, but that doesn't say that I wouldn't get a return out of it. I need to do better about the database. Uh, for sale owners? No, I guess you. But do you? Sometimes. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just get it. It's expired the same way. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Circle process. Absolutely. Um, sphere of influence. Absolutely. Okay. So he's doing two pieces of pie. Can you imagine how many much, mo much more uh, GCI will be coming in next year when he adds expires, expires and she adds yeah, yeah. Fizbo's in database. I think I'd do better by Fizbo's. Yeah. And I add Fizbo's. There you go. There's the four pieces of the pie. And all these guys do open houses. Um, they all are very good at conversion ratio, which is really, really, really important. So, if there's one aha moment that you would say the past year has uh, um, created for you, what would that be? Uh, I guess knowing my ratios, uh, knowing for every 25 people that I talk to, one person is going to be interested in buying, selling, or investing in real estate, or either know somebody that's looking to buy, that's sell. On his number. Yeah. So, He's a and when you do it, when you do it, it just makes sense. So it's like, I know I need to talk to 1,825 people to do 73 transactions. You just have to have the belief that you can do it. And each one of these people believe that they can, the sky's the limit, right? Exactly. Um, where did, uh, I was at the aha uh -huh. moment. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, the aha moment for me is just tracking my numbers and knowing what I need to go after to hit certain targets. I honestly, I can't pinpoint it. When, when I tell you that this year has been a tremendous, tremendous learning experience. I, I mean, honestly, I, I, no, no exaggeration, I have about 20 notebooks of notes. I mean, I write down and keep track of just everything I learned. That's, um, She's like a sponge. Me. I am. But the bad thing is, I don't know where, which notebook I was saying. So one day she, <laughs> one day she had to write, one day she had to write an email to a client. And she came in my office, we sat down, we discussed it. She's so cute. She just takes notes the whole time. And I'm like, just chattering away. I'm like, okay, I have no idea what she's writing down. I said, send me the email before you send it out. Let me take a look at it. It was if I, as if I wrote it. It was scary. I was like, oh my God, she's got my brain now. <laughs> yep, suck it all out. Um, but I think one of the biggest ahas to me, because I know how hard it is, is it's a part of the process. It's a part of your growth. Learning to fail forward. Learning to, you're gonna, there's gonna be times where it's disappointing. You're going to get discouraged, but you have to keep pushing through the times that you feel afraid. Every time I feel afraid to do something, I, I, I imagine myself busting through a wall, because I hate that feeling. I know that fear that, that fear limits me. So bust through the wall, and when you feel down on yourself, I've had, I've had went to list an appointment, no call, no show, seller doesn't show up. Got dressed, so excited. I had one that was supposed to be a million dollar listing. I've never had a luxury listing. So I'm like, yes, okay, great. My first luxury. Got there, lady's not there. I even went to, I went to the other house. I didn't do collections. So you don't, if you're not in one house, I'm going to the other house. I'm <laughs> <laughs> hello, you missed our appointment this morning. <laughs> she wasn't at that one either. My daughter was there. I left a message. Um, anyway, it's a little story. <laughs> that go get them. You got to have it. But, at the oh, the Janine that when, that first entered into real estate would have got down on myself. I'm like, this is ugh, I can't stand it. I hate that, you know, I hate I hate that. But what I automatically when that happened, I said, I'm not gonna get down on it. It's a part of it. There's gonna be there's gonna be uh, uh, listings of buyers that we can't convert. There's gonna be deals that fall through. I had to learn that the hard way, and I had to learn to cope with that the hard way. If you can change your mentality and know and be ready for that and accept it and move forward, you can overcome it. And when she did that, even though I was down for about five minutes, I'm like, I'm not gonna let that. I'm not gonna let that bother me because she's one person out of this entire area. I went door knocking to expires. So, so Marcus, you all knows his numbers, okay? I'm a numbers person also. Janine Bad about my numbers. doesn't like getting no's. Yeah. Marcus and I and Bo know that that no that she just got is her way to get to her yes. Yeah. That's your fuel. 
Yeah. So. That's, true. That's a good way to be. Yeah. You gotta be that way. You have to. You have to. So Janine, uh, Marcus, what's your volume gonna be by the end of the year? By the end of this year, I'm shooting for twelve million. No, 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 not 2020. Oh, 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 see, I'm, I'm already. I'm about to say, God, don't. Oh, yeah, twi- 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 <laughs> so, so, I, I, I finished it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Damn, he's going to finish strong this year, right? Are you hiring? Now, what did you, you do for Legion? <laughs> yeah. Good. Oh, my God. The numbers, I'm telling you. I'm going to sit on my chair. I saw that. That's a good job. Kiss up. So, well. Don't sit on your mind. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. 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 i am sorry i am sorry i so how much volume so, do you have in for no. So for currently three point about three point three in volume. Uh, well, I mean I got some stuff that's closed. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was three point three. Uh, you, I thought you were four. Yeah, I am. So oh. so this is these, these right. deals. Right. Yeah. yeah. So by the end of the year she'll hit four million. You were Which qualifies you from top producer <coughs> in Atlanta, too. Right, yeah, that's an important. So, Janine came to me, and she just wanted a cap. Marcus came to me, and Bo came to me, because they wanted to hit $4 million. I wanted to hit $4 million, too. Well, <laughs> I said, why am I not going to want to do it? No, but you have no money for cap. But Marcus came to me, he had already capped. Okay. So, his goal was you not first to goal. get yeah. to, his, he had two goals. One, he wanted to become a listing machine, and number two, he wanted to um, <laughs> he wanted to become a listing machine, and then he also wanted to um, hit four million so that he can make an Atlanta Board of Realtors. Janine wanted to cap. She wanted to go for Rookie of the Year, and she wanted to um, be top producer. Be top producer, but she also first wanted to hit to the, uh, the Atlanta <coughs> Realtors Association. Also, her first goal was to cap. Yeah, but understand that both Marcus and Bo had capped in previously. What, with buyers, not with sellers. Okay, so now their ba- their their businesses are much. Would you say that your business is a little bit more balanced? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. For and sure. your time is a little bit more balanced. Yeah, you don't feel like you're gonna burn yourself out anymore. This year's almost felt like a vacation. There you go. Yeah, buyers will burn out. Some buyers will burn you out. This thing's not as <sighs> the same. Yeah, buyers, buyers will, will burn you out. out. <laughs> yes, yeah. That's why it's been your first year, but you really want to, once you start mastering that, start targeting the list. So where are you right now? So now there's two ways to make the Atlanta Board of Realtors. You can either do 4 million in sales or 15 transactions. So I have 12 transactions, but I have um, two closings, one one Friday, one next week, and then I have two more on the, that's supposed to be on the contract, hopefully. And I think we all think we'll get a close by this year. So hopefully she'll make it. If I'm, I'm barely there, I'm pushing. Marcus has 50, yeah, so he made the Atlanta Board of Realtors. And yes, now yeah, let's, yeah. let's talk about the quiet one over here. Yeah. Yeah. The one that's quiet one. Trying to work for Marcus all the time. So, so Bo is a very um, humble individual. He is. Yeah. He truly is. Yeah. And he gets some drink and some beers. Well, I want to second your because <coughs> you got to find a way to let that that rejection fuel you because it's gonna happen. I tell people I grew up a fat kid that was also thought he was a ladies' man, so I rejection never bothered me, right? And it's a blessing because because i have been getting rejected forever, you know. So I just kept on moving. That's what you got to do. That's that's a good eye. My my eye, my personal eye is be yourself. Just be yourself because people are gonna like you. They're gonna sense your genuine and that kind of stuff. Just be yourself. I, I dress like this for a purpose. I was telling them because this is when I feel most comfortable. If I dress, they look fantastic and they're confident. They don't need much more confidence. They're killing it. But if I dress like that, my confidence actually goes. Deep. Each one of them has a different way of doing it. I like to stay home in my pajamas and give them a dollar for dollar. Um, Marcus likes to go to a, uh, an internet place, like uh, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. He's a Dunkin' Donuts man. Okay. 
um, probably more expensive than Starbucks. <laughs> I think I have bigger buyers. Good <laughs> <laughs> point. Yeah, See, this is what you love about it. Right. <laughs> so one day they were like, oh, we're going to go do our bold 100. I was like, all right, I'm going to go to the mall. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. I'm going to be like, go to Home Depot. Go to Lowe's. Go someplace where homeowners are. Yeah. You know, go where they shop. You know, that's the people that you want to hand out your card to. Yeah. That's the people that you want to have a conversation with. So, um, Janine likes to go into an office. Mm -hmm. She likes to focus, she likes to get up, she likes to get dressed, she likes to get her kids in school, and she likes to go to an office. And see, I have a corporate background, so that's where I drive. I have to be in a corporate type of environment. If I'm at home, I'm just like, oh, this is horrible. So, <laughs> no, I have to be in a corporate But type you know that about yourself. Yeah. You like to, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I just play my strings. I like to be comfortable. I, I come out more fluid and I'm more myself when I feel like comfortable. Each one of these guys <laughs> will hit a six-figure income this year. Um, Bo, um, we need to congratulate Bo. Uh, he more than likely, uh, by the 31st, will be rookie of the year yeah. at a previous office. That really and this is the only person, and these two actually are the only people I will lose to. Well, uh, except for Marcus is not a contender. I know, I know. Uh, but I thought he was at one point. <laughs> so I'm like, man, I'm like, it's Marcus and Bo. We oh, did. Let me go ahead and get their right. congratulation gift. Right. <laughs> and, so, and, and by the way, it's killing her. Just so I, you know. Well, I know because. Yeah, I, but I mean, I want it so bad. I want it so bad. But if I'm, but when you have to respect someone that also works as hard or harder than you do, well, you have to respect. It's not. He's not someone that is falling in his lap, and it's not. And Marcus is not either. So, <clears throat> how many you, transactions did you do this year? Um, yeah. sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, and see, for me, I'm I'm barely gonna hit fifteen. So Hopefully. she she did. She's gonna say fifteen, but the truth is, Janine did about twenty five. She had a lot fall out. Yeah. Marcus, about how many did you have? About three or four. <laughs> yeah. So he would have had twenty. <laughs> see what I'm saying? So you've got to make sure that you have your backup. To yeah. make sure that things are going to progressively go down the road. And I should be. I was really going for the $4 million. I'll probably end about $3.3 million. But she's still going to make it because she'll have 15 yeah. transactions. Now, Bo, <laughs> Bo's um, volume is uh, his uh, dollar per sale is higher than both of them. Right. So, <laughs> uh, Marcus, I think, do you, do you know what your, what your typical... Um, price price. Yeah. Uh, anywhere from 180 to about 225. I'm about the same. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm close to 300. Yeah. So there's there's definitely the difference. So these are the properties. Yeah, the price 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 price. Price. yeah. And see, that's what I would like. I'd rather go for the higher price point. There's less work. But However, it's not as easy to go. As we talked about the other day, the higher price point hard. also is more difficult to get moved. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah. she tells, taught me that. I never thought about that. I was always going for the higher price point. But they take longer to sell, they take longer to move. Even my even the properties in my side of town that's over three hundred thousand, those things are sitting. Right. If I go up north, they're good because it's, that's what most of the buyers are spending that amount, anyways. But on my side of town, they like to stay around two fifty, two twenty, or lower. If you go over there two fifty, three hundred, we're sitting ducks for a little while. So with that, I'm going to open it up to you guys. Do you have any questions for these guys? So honestly, when I very first started, uh, two things I wanted to tell y'all: make sure that you take a roll of toilet paper and always have it in your car. That's number one. Oh yeah. Number two, if you have your kid with you, make sure they're always in the car with you. Yeah. Don't leave them at a house like I did. <laughs> I did. Don't just leave my kid at a house. <laughs> she was seven. It was very interesting. And I'm also open to y'all calling me too. I mean, I don't know everything. I still have a lot to learn. But if what I have learned, I don't mind sharing with you and giving you those tips because that does help you kind of cut through some of the other things. You know, they just, uh, just I can just tell you what, what from my experience, what it was helped me. So. so I'd like to wrap this up by saying that each and every one of you just has to wake up every single morning and look in the mirror and decide who you want to be. I want to be everyone combined. Okay. Me too. No, 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 no. We want you to be you. We want you to be you yeah. doing it your way and doing it the way that is the most productive for you. Yeah, it the, works different for everybody. The question yeah. is, you know, like I said, we have this mountain that we all are climbing to see how high it's at the top we can get. Um, you know, we've got your one percenters and your half percenters, and they, those people go to the top of the mountain. Um, these guys that you're looking at here in the front of the room are definitely one percenters. I don't know, you know, what in your heart you are. Most salespeople earn to what they need. I've never earned to what I needed. 
Rafi and Nadal doesn't earn or doesn't play tennis to what he needs. He plays tennis because he has a goal to do something. He has a goal <coughs> to win something or to achieve something. I think Federer probably sat around and said, okay, I want to uh, try to at least attempt to hit Sampras's, um, you know, goals of what are to be part of that elite group of um, players that are out there. These agents are doing the exact same thing. Over the years, I've taught sales in a variety of different ways, and one of the things that I've always learned is, number one, the secret sauce is you. You are the secret sauce. Can I make one more tip, too, Ann? <clears throat> I'm trying to think of some of the challenges that I had. <clears throat> when, at, when, at first, until you master your skills like you want to, master your confidence, it may be a little hard. You may get more no's than yes. So, and you might not. Some people come in and get a whole bunch of guesses. So don't, that's a limiting belief. Don't say, don't think that you will. But in, if you come to a point where you feel like you're getting more nose and yes, and you're, you're being hard on yourself, remember to always try to surround yourself around other realtors, other people with the same mindset, and share your stories. Push each other through and support each other to do that story. Also, listen to audiobooks, motivational videos on YouTube, you know, stuff like that to keep your mind focused on positive, positive things. Because when you're also, when you're when you're not listening to that, and you're not around that, you're constantly replaying negative things in your head. And that's what we're naturally taught to do, really. That's how just naturally who we are. So if you constantly, if you listen to audiobooks that keep you focused on positive things, being successful, you know, and just listen and feeding off other people's energy like these, when I'm around them, they, they motivate me. You know what I mean? So you sometimes when it's hard to self motivate, get back around people that can help motivate you and go do the same thing. And push. They motivate me. Yeah. You build each other up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 real estate is what? And for me, it's a great adventure. Yeah. yeah. Hi there. So glad that you uh, got to the end of this. It was a long video, but it was an amazing candid chat with, with three rookies uh, that came on board uh, through uh, my coaching program and were able to uh, successfully uh, go on to achieve each and every goal that they set for themselves for the 12 months that they were participated in my uh, coaching. So um, I enjoyed uh, every minute with those guys as I look forward to hopefully meeting you out there in YouTube land <laughs> that's watching this video right now. And if you have a desire to be a six-figure income earner in real estate and if you want to create a sustainable business for you and your family, please contact me. All the information is down below. Whether you're just thinking about real estate, getting finishing up your real estate courses, or getting ready to take the real estate test, I am more than happy to have a chat with you. Um, if you're an uh, experienced agent and coming into the Atlanta area, I can certainly give you the 411 on everything that's going on in Atlanta. Okay, thanks for stopping by, and remember to subscribe to the channel hit the bell so that this way you'll be informed on all the real estate uh, things that I put out there. Everything, all things Atlanta. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.